Welcome back to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for being with us. This segment is brought to you by RealCrowd.com. Check them out for crowdfunding for commercial real estate. Well, today we're talking about the office sector. And one of the things that are changing the office sector is really technology, the way we track the office sector, the way we use office space. Please welcome my next guest. It's Duke Long, and he is founder of the Duke Long Agency, and he's joining us on the phone. Duke, thanks for being with us. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Uh, love all your stuff and uh, looking forward to it. Well, Duke, thanks. And, uh, you know, you're so involved in technology for commercial real estate. You're you're based up there in New York, so if uh, if your listeners hear a, a siren or something, he's not being pulled over. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's in Manhattan. So, uh, so do what do you think about these uh, data companies? I mean, it's real important that if you're a tenant or you're a your tenant rep uh, or a landlord to kind of know what's going on and in the office space. And of course, CoStar's been the big giant. Uh, Excelligence kind of went away. Uh, but there's some other uh, new, new players that have kind of come into the space, right? Yeah. Um, the, when, when I think about the data part, and I've kind of touched on this before a little bit, you've got to think about the sources of data. And some of the companies that are out there, they're sourcing that data, what I would call almost from the origination part of it, let's say from the building owners themselves, a little bit like VTS. Uh, and then you have the brokerages that have the historic data that they've had for years and years that they keep up on. So I think those kinds of companies are still the stronger contenders. Um, then I say there's data that's maybe a second second level of data that's kind of the mixed market of different aggregations of other parts and pieces. I think that's where a lot of the, the tech vendors are right now. They're trying to bring different parts and pieces to this this layer to allow some of the brokerages and some of these investment people to kind of help make decisions. And then you have what I call kind of the third party stuff was just a random stuff that's out there that's sourced in ways that are very archaic mm -hmm. in today's terms. So uh, I think it's getting very, very sophisticated. I think it's getting almost, you know, to the minute now it's, uh, it's certainly going that way and uh, it's never, never not fascinating. Yeah, it, it is uh, it is incredible, and I think one thing you've got to watch for too is that you know maybe you have access to to some systems to find some space, and you're a you're a business and you need space, but uh, there's still it's the professionals that that do this every day, and I think in terms of residential real estate where that they've had a lot of technology for a long time, billions invested. But it seems like residential agents are still doing extremely well. And if you're your company and you need office space or you're changing office space, uh, I just know from experience of dealing with great tenant reps here in my shop at other shops around the country, boy, there, there's tremendous value. And and the technology is kind of changing the way that that tenants that use space, right? And and think about companies like WeWork. And what do you hear out there in the in the field about companies like WeWork, dude? Well, I, uh, I've been kind of, you know, somewhat of an advocate for something like WeWork, first of all, because I think as you talk about how people use space, and I'm in and out of WeWorks all the time, um, they, they think of it differently. I think they think of it as a consumer experience. Uh, they think about building a community or a tribe, for the lack of a better term. So the way they go about it is almost like every individual is a tenant. Uh, that doesn't mean that that doesn't happen in office parks outside of Nashville or whatever. But they, they look at everyone as a consumer. They look at every service that that person might use as a revenue source. And that is fascinating to me. I'm, again, I'm a big advocate for it. I'm, there's some people saying that, you know, it's, they don't have X money or it's a house of cards or whatever. But um, uh, they keep filling them up. And I think they said that they're one lease away from being the largest leaser in uh, the city of New York. And they're already the biggest one in London. So they're doing something, and they're filling them up too. Yeah, well, it's an interesting model, and uh, you know they've got some some new competition out there. Well, what else in the technology world? Is there are there other companies that you think that are doing a good job, or they're that are trying to get into technology uh, space for the office sector? Um, I, you know, there are some other. Uh, I, what I think about, let's say, like the WeWorks of the world, mm -hmm. if uh, let's say they're only one or two or three percent of the entire market. That's still a humongous number. 
I do think that that's going to grow probably the way people work, maybe 20, 30 percent of the marketplace uh, in any market. Uh, you've got industrious that's coming in. You've got Spaceful. You've got a lot of different companies trying to do that. The other thing that I find fascinating is some of the uh, the uses of, especially within the building itself, where I think that's way underrated. Uh, all the sensors, the way people use them, uh, the efficiencies. I don't think that gets talked about enough because it's you know it's not sexy to talk about companies going under. It's just how how is someone utilizing a room? How are they? How's the HVAC working? You know, the efficiencies around the building. I think that's a huge um, growth sector for, for tech and, and commercial real estate. Yeah, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, a lot of the buildings I go into, I'm sometimes really just disappointed in, in the lack of technology uh, used in some of these uh, buildings. You know, simple things like the, the lights coming on and off automatically or the, you know, having LED lighting and, and having just a lot of efficiency built into the HVAC systems and, 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 and even into the security aspects uh, of the space. Well, Duke, you see a lot of companies that have come into tech space in commercial real estate over the years, and it seems like it's, it's not slowing down. You know, how many of these companies can, can make it and be profitable? Well, um, everybody, you know, it's kind of a, a little inside joke of all the people that invest in these companies. Everybody says they're going to be the platform. You know, we are the platform, and everybody's mm-hmm. going to give us all their stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. I do think that at a certain point there has to be some kind of consolidation or usability. And I'm thinking of uh, some, a friend of mine up at, that does Boston Properties, and he's like, we can only buy so many pieces of technology. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean they, can't, they can certainly afford to buy everything, but how many? What, what's in their stack? How many companies can get in with other companies and work together to provide that building owner or that tenant rep you know, quality service? And how many do you really need? So I think there's a lot of copycat stuff out there. And to get to the point, it's uh, from a tech standpoint, it's all about a land grab, which is ironic, but it's all about market share. So if somebody's out there, let's say, again, I bring up BTS or all these different companies, if they're out there gaining market share and dominating, then they're probably going to be one of the platforms that people are going to have to work with. And is the commercial real estate space, uh, Duke, big enough for the amount of millions and millions of dollars that tech companies are invested in commercial real estate technology? Um, I, in, the, in the built environment, the construction, and uh, the, the management and maintenance of the building, very much so. I think it's big enough. Mm-hmm. As far as the transactional stuff, um, that really gets down to workflow and some data, and I think we could just be so much better at it because, and I've used this comparison many times, you have the, the stock market, which is a very transparent and functional marketplace, a global marketplace, we're probably 20 years behind them in certain data sets and maybe five years behind the technology. So we can make some of those processes much more efficient and quicker and help make decisions better. So I'm not sure how big that can be. But again, to go back to the other, the other part of the, the buildings, like you say, all the different parts, uh, that could be endless, in my opinion, because it's such a major, you know, it's what, I don't know, 25% of the GDP, and everybody's got to work somewhere, generally. Yeah. So there's always going to be that part. Piece yeah, of it. that's a good point. And what about crowdfunding? You, you kind of mentioned liquidity and, and, and people investing in commercial real estate. You know, is crowdfunding the technology answer to possibly to that? Um, I would say how I see that part of it going, um, it depends on the process itself. And I'll bring up something that's a little bit, you know, out there a little bit. And I, I could talk about blockchain, but I'm more interested in, part of what blockchain can do in the tokenization or the liquidization liquidity of of a property let's say you have property a b and c and property a is you're able to trade tokens or shares of that company almost like on an exchange or a market that is crowdfunding in my opinion but i also think it needs to be more secure and more i won't say regulated but maybe regulated it has to be safe again a little bit like the stock market the other parts that crowdfunding i'm a little bit of a skeptic on just because it still just looks like a REIT to me, that they're sourcing accredited or not accredited investors. So I, I think we can do something a little bit better along those lines. And if, if it liquidizes uh, uh, 20 or 30% of the market, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, therefore giving everyone access. Yeah, well, it cer- certainly is a, 
a clever way for somebody to get into large, nice commercial real estate properties with small amounts of money. But obviously, you got to have use the same due diligence uh, that you would. You look at the the sponsor uh, and the property. You know, it's amazing that right now you can go online and invest in large commercial real estate projects with small amounts of money. Yeah, I again, I think it's awesome. Yeah. But you know, we're professionals. We're the ones that do it, and I just still worry about grandma out in Brooklyn getting <laughs> hammered by some scam. So it, I, I, not so much it's got to be legitimized, but I think it needs to be regulated and, and be a fair marketplace, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good point. I had a guy the other day calling and he wanted to invest $200,000 in, in a deal that we were putting together with a client. And uh, and so I asked him, I said, well, this whose money is this? This is my mom's. And I said, so she has a lot of other assets of other types all around. He said, "No, this is all she has." <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> "Oh my God, see what I'm saying?" Yeah, I'm saying, "No, no, you you're not. No, we're not doing this." Uh, I think it's a great <laughs> investment, but not for the entire amount of your funds. Well, yeah, do no well, do great information as usual. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you being on the show. All right, thank you so much, Michael. You do great stuff, and uh, I really love being on your show. All right, well, stay with us. We'll have more on the office sector. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.